Hello and welcome to the Lucian video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to go over FileCenter's custom save and open integration. Now first an explanation. FileCenter is able to replace the save and open dialogs of most of your programs in Windows, making it possible for you to save files directly into FileCenter and open files directly from your FileCenter cabinets, regardless of what program you're in. And even if you have this integration enabled, you're also able to switch back to your regular Windows dialogs whenever you need to. So it's a very, very convenient feature. And in this video, we're going to go through how to set that up and how to use that. Now, the first step is to turn on the integration. To do that, we're going to come up here to File Center Settings. We select Save Open Dialogs on the left. And then we want to select this option right here Enable Custom Save As and Open Dialogs. And we also want to make sure that right here it's set to enable for all supported applications. Here's what that means. File Center comes pre-configured to be able to integrate with a majority of the most common Windows applications. Selecting this option will replace the save and open dialogs in each one of those applications. Now, I will note that you may have other programs that File Center isn't currently integrating with because File Center doesn't know about all programs. But in a future video, we'll show you how to turn on this integration for those programs as well. So I've selected these options, and now I simply need to hit OK. And the integration is now turned on. Now let's switch over to Microsoft Word as an example to see how this integration works. Now I have a document here that I'm ready to save. So I'm going to come up here and just hit the Save button in Microsoft Word as I normally would. And when I hit that, notice what happens. This window pops up. This is File Center's version of the Save dialog. Using this dialog, I can save my file directly into a file cabinet, which is very, very convenient. Now we want to go through just a couple of the features and attributes of this dialog so you can understand it a little bit better. First of all, you'll notice that this section right here is identical to your file cabinets inside a file center, including most of the same functionality. For example, here in the Files button, you have all the same options that you have in the, under the Files button inside of the regular file center interface. The same goes for the Drawers and the Folders buttons. I can change my display time just like I can in File Center. For example, if I want to use Enhanced Thumbnails, there we go, I can now do a Thumbnails view inside of here. go back to details. But what's different is this section down below. Here I have a series of controls that are going to allow me to give this file a name and to save the file. And let's look at those really quickly. First of all, this is a field where I can give this a file name. And if I happen to use naming options in File Center, you'll notice I can click this drop arrow right here and I can see my naming options. And I can pick a file name right from the list. For example, I've got some naming options here that uh, draw from the from the drawer name which shows up there. If I were to come over here and switch drawers you'll notice that those have switched to that client's name. So now I can name a file simply by picking a name off of this list as such. Now I also have this button right here which is my custom lists button. If I click this button my custom lists pop up so that I can build a file name based on lists that I've defined in the past. And if you haven't seen them already, please watch the naming options in custom lists videos. Now, if I display file extensions in Windows by default, I'm going to see this field right here, where I can control the file extension. Uh, many of you won't see this because most users by default turn off file extensions. But in the event that you do show them, they'll show up here inside of File Center as well. Now this field lets you choose what type of file you're going to use, or what type of file format, I should say. For example, if we expand this, you'll notice that these are the file types that you normally see when you save a Microsoft Word document. I can choose any one of these formats to save my document in. And as I do that, my file extension here is going to change appropriately. For example, if I want to change, save this as a uh, rich text format file instead of a uh, instead of the normal Word format, I just need to come down here and select it on the list. Rich text format. And there we go. When I save the file, it'll be saved as an RTF file instead of the normal Word document. 
Now this is a useful option down below, the Don't Filter option. Here's what that means. Inside of most Windows programs, uh, your display of files is going to be filtered by whatever type of file you show right here. In fact, let's go to another drawer and see this. Okay, so for example, if I deselect this, you'll notice all of a sudden I'm not seeing any files here at all. Maybe I could change this back to Doc. And now one file does show up because it's only showing files that match this file extension. That's the default behavior in Windows. Uh, but we recognize that sometimes you want to be able to see all of your files regardless of what the file extensions are. And that's where this option right here comes into play. If I click Don't Filter, notice now I'm going to see all of the files that are in that folder regardless of what their file extension is. Now this is useful because sometimes when you save a file, you want to base the file name on an existing file. And you want to be able to see all the files in that folder. Well, to do that, I can come and I can simply select one of these files. For example, here's a PDF that says Secretary's Checklist. If I select this, notice what happens to my file name. Now I'm going to save this file also with Secretary's Checklist. Now I may want to add more information after this. I may want to say it's Secretary's Checklist too. But also notice that these file extensions don't match, so it's not going to overwrite this file. And if it were going to overwrite it, you will get that prompt that will let you know that you're about to overwrite a file. But this is a really nice way to base a new document on a name that you've used for a different document. Well, I'm going to add a little more information to this file name. And now I'm going to go ahead and save it. And you'll notice up here that that's the new file name for this document. So it saved it successfully. And switching over to File Center, you see that there's our file right there in the cabinet. So again, a very convenient way to save files directly into your cabinet from nearly any Windows program. Let's switch back over to Word right now and take a look at a couple more things. First of all, let's note that this also works the same way with Open as it does with Save. If I click the Open button here in Word, I see File Center's dialog where I can choose a file directly out of my cabinet and open it right into Microsoft Word. But where I want to draw your attention right now is to this section right here at the top of the Save and Open dialog. First of all, I want you to notice the Most Recent button right here. This is a listing of the most recent locations where you have saved or opened files. And so this is a really quick way to jump back and forth between a few locations that you've been using very recently. Now let's talk about turning off this dialog. Let's say that you go to open a file and you've realized that that file isn't anywhere in a file cabinet. Perhaps it's out on your desktop and you need to open it up. Yet File Center doesn't seem to have any way for you to browse out to your desktop to open up that file. Well, you've got a few options here. First of all, you could disable the save and open integration completely, but realize that this is a permanent disabling. If you click this button, then you'll have to go back into File Center into Settings to turn everything back on again. You can adjust your settings right here, but really the button you want to be using is right here. It's called Switch to Windows, and that does exactly what it describes. If I click this button, it's going to temporarily, for one time only, switch from my File Center dialog back to the normal Windows dialog. Let's click this and see what happens. Okay. I've just dismissed File Center's custom dialog and gone back to my normal Windows open dialog. And here I can browse to anywhere on my computer. I can go to my desktop or anywhere, and I can open a file just like you could before in Microsoft Word. That's a really a nice way to, on a case-by-case -case basis, switch back to the regular dialogs without disabling the integration altogether. And in fact, if I cancel here and come back to the Open button, notice we're back to File Center again. And while we're here, I'll give you one tip. You don't even have to use the Switch to Windows button. You can actually just hit the Escape key on your keyboard, and that will switch over. For example, I'm going to hit my Escape key right now. And there we go. We switched back over to the Windows dialog. So there you have the convenience to be able to toggle back to a regular dialog when you need to, but to be able to use File Center for most of your saving and opening.